I'm on a boat. Hey, welcome back everybody to Chris Peters DIY. You guys remember this? Well, today we're gonna pull the intake manifold off and uh, replace the gaskets. All right, so this is what we're working with here. If you remember from my last video for this boat, this is the uh, blown out gasket here. And uh, to get this off, the sugar needs to come out, coil needs to come out, some other things have already been done. Um, the, the port where the uh, thermostat goes in housing, that's already been taken off. As you can see, that's off right here. And then uh, all the intake bolts need to come out. Fuel lines, we're gonna leave the uh, throttle body injection unit on the manifold and uh, pull the whole thing up as one, one assembly. And that way we can get to underneath underneath there, get a good inspection in there, see, uh, see if we can spot what caused the gasket to blow out, if anything, or if maybe it was just a bad gasket, who knows. Okay, I'll go ahead and pull the coil off right here. I like, always like to put the hardware back um, where I pulled out of if, if I can. Um, that way I know exactly where everything goes back. Um, throttle cable has been pulled off right here. And then the distributor cap's been pulled off. I leave all the wires on it, that way I ain't gotta look in the book and find out where they all go. But I mean, it's GM so it's pretty standard. And then down here is your hold down for your distributor. We're gonna pull that off and then uh, pull the distributor up. So when you're pulling a distributor out of an engine, it's always good to uh, mark the position of your rotor and the position of the distributor. So why that's important is because when you twist this distributor back and forth, it adjusts your, your timing or the firing of your engine. So always um, try to make, I don't know what I've done here is I've just made a little mark where the rotor lines up and also I've made a mark here, oh excuse me, here lined up with this bolt that way I know exactly where this comes up because what's going to happen is as as I pull this up this is going to twist a little bit because the gear on the um, distributor is kind of a spiral cut so as I pull this up the gears coming out of the cam and it's twisting this so just make sure you make good marks that way you can put everything back down uh, exactly where it was Pull your wires off your throttle body. Notice there's supposed to be a little rubber um, sealing the connector. Make sure you look back inside where you got it from because sometimes the connectors, the, the seals get stuck inside there. And you, especially with the marine application, you want these um, sealed properly. Yeah. So at this point, I'm going to pull the fuel filter off. And then this gives me access to the wires that are going into the throttle body here. And we're going to pull the connectors off the throttle body and we're going to lay this harness over um, and just move the wires off to the side so we can pull everything up as a unit. Alright, so... We've got the uh, lines pulled off for the uh, injectors, fuel filters out of the way. I've got fuel line pulled out of the back of the uh, throttle body here. Now we've got a couple of lines. We got the your return. That's your return line. This is your supply line. 
This line here we can leave on because this is attached here. So that all will come up with it. We might pull it off later just to give you better access to the bolts for the intake. And then these lines here we're going to pull off from down here too. Um, I don't want to try to bend these off the side to get this whole intake manifold off because I don't want to risk kinking it or snapping it. Same with this line. So we're going to go ahead and pull these off from down here where the, the dis distribution block is for the fuel. pulling these fuel lines off make sure you look very carefully when you're pulling them out of the fittings they have these little o-rings on the end of them that seal the fuel from leaking out the one on this end popped off when I was pulling it out of the fuel filter fortunately for me I found it sitting in the intake so I can put it back on here and with the wiring I just kind of zip tied the wiring off to the side far enough your uh, distributor your coil I've got a zip tie holding that all out of the way the idea is just to keep this whole area free from anything that's going to keep this from, from lifting this straight off off the top. All right, once you get your fuel lines out of there, all your wires are kind of tucked out of the way, distributor, coil, cables, everything is out of the way. Now we can start pulling all the intake bolts out of here. into here and I need a wrench to get on these because of where the intake is. I noticed this one hardly took any energy to pull off of there and that could have been part of the reason why this gasket blew out. Now it could have been just extreme heat and whether a gasket blew out, um, now the bolt was loose because that material is not there anymore. That could also be part of it but it's something to think about when you're doing this. And the more I work on this the more stuff I find. Check this out. I don't know why I didn't notice this before, but see that mark right there? That gasket has also been blown out on this side of the intake too, not not just that side. And as, just as well, these bolts weren't very tight either. Now I'm not sure if that's a design flaw or what, but you can see all along, oh, come on, all along here and right here, that's also been leaking. guys got the intake off of here I went ahead and stuffed towels paper towels in each one of these ports because when you clean the gasket material off you don't want anything falling down in there rags covering the whole basin here there's open ports here on either end and if it gets down in there you don't want any material getting down in the oil there so I recently made a video the last time I was on this boat we were trying to figure out a uh, misfire problem and uh, I misspoke when I talked about the intake manifold gasket and and it didn't really have an intake manifold leak. So we're going to revisit that, that problem later. I think we're going to go back and try to track um, an electrical problem. So let me show you what was really going on here and why I was wrong on that last video. So for those of you who saw the last video, um, I showed an intake leak over here with intake manifold on. Um, that, I, that I said it was an intake leak, but it's actually an exhaust leak. This is an exhaust crossover that goes across the intake. And you can see over here on the intake, this is the exhaust that goes through and what this does is it heats up your intake manifold for cold days or excuse me, it heats up your uh, 
your throttle body and your whole intake manifold on cold days. And that's actually what was leaking out of there. Now in the other video, I said it was an intake leak um, here, but that's not an intake port. These are your intake ports, so I was wrong about that. Now if the gasket had been bad enough to where it was cracked all the way through to one of these intake ports, then yeah, I can see that being being the case where it needed to be replaced and sucking air into the intake with a vacuum leak or whatever, but uh, in this case all it is is just those got blown out, those gaskets got blown out, and that was it. So we're just going to replace the gaskets, put the intake manifold back on, call it a day, and then we're going to trace the electrical problem afterwards. cleaned off. I took a shot back, vacuumed all the little ports out, vacuumed up this plate, and so everything's nice and clean ready to go back together. So here the gasket kit comes with these port gaskets for the ends of the intake manifold and then your regular intake gaskets. So what I like to do is take copper coat and spray each side of the gasket before laying it down. Now if you ask five different mechanics slash tell you five different things. Some people like to use high tack. I like to use copper coat. Some people like to just layer both sides with RTV. Uh, it's, it comes down mostly to personal preference and personal experience. I've got good uh, good results with the copper coat, so that's what I'm going to use today. Um, down here, where the cork gaskets are, the book wants you to put um, a coat of sealant on the edges and the corners here where this... Uh, um, where this plate here meets the head and we're going to do that on both sides and then with this cork um, we're going to actually sandwich that with our TV also a thin coat on, on both sides of that gasket before putting it down in place. Point, I'm just putting everything back in reverse order where I pull it out of. Um, with these hard metal lines like this for these fuel lines, I like to keep them loose while I'm situating everything and then once everything's in place then I tighten everything down because if you tighten down one end and you try to start and thread the other end for this fuel filter, it may not have the angle you want. So I like to keep all that stuff loose, thread everything, snug it down and then go back with a wrench and, and tighten it all up. Filler neck for the uh, coolant up here with your pressure cap. We use this RTV here, gasket maker for water pumps and thermostats. And this this application, the thermostat's back here, so there's no thermostat here, so the thermostat's not going to seal that. So that's why we need this. And then once you get that all bolted down, hook up your uh, pressure sender and then put some uh, thread seal on. All right, set your distributor back down in there, making sure that your marks that you made line up. Make sure your distributor. Rotor lines up with the mark you made, connect your wires back up, and then cap, coil, and bolt everything down. Okay, I didn't record everything I did because my phone is getting ready to die, but uh, got all the coolant lines running, tightened down, all these different funky looking coolant lines running everywhere that was already off when I started the project. 
Um, and we're about ready to uh, fire this guy up. All right, that's gonna do it here. Engine's back up and running. Everything's sealed up and we got no more leaks. Thanks for watching Chris Peters DIY. If you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button and hit that like button and uh, we'll see you in the next one.